Hello, and welcome to the Bourbon College Podcast. I'm your host, Austin. Let's get started. Hey guys, welcome to the Bourbon College Podcast. I'm Austin, and I'm enjoying bourbon without breaking the bank. We have a very special episode today. So last week was really cool because we got to interview a owner of a distillery, which is very awesome. Today is kind of a continuation of my episode from two weeks ago about taking notes on your whiskey. Um, today, I'm interviewing the owner of the company that uh, makes the books that I take notes with, the uh, 33 books. His name is uh, Dave Selden, and he he's from uh, Portland, Oregon. And that was interesting, uh, getting the time zones right and coordinating all that. But he took the time out of his day to talk to me, to talk to us. And without further ado, I'll let him speak. I've always kind of been interested in learning about things. Um, and I, I did not grow up a foodie or really into fine things at all. But um, as I've <laughs> gone deeper and deeper down the rabbit hole, uh, my, my gateway product was kind of beer. And, um, you know, I went to college and drank a lot of Miller Lite and Coors Light and so on. But um, uh, eventually I was exposed to uh, what was then called microbrew. I guess it sort of still is. And um, we moved to Portland, Oregon right around that time. Um, and the first bar I went to had 20 different beers on taps, which just about blew my mind. Uh, nowadays, that would be considered quaint. Um but uh, yeah, I've lived here for uh, almost 20 years now and um, just gotten to really love living here and um, trying all the great things that are produced here. Um, everything from beer to coffee to wine and tea and all, everything else. That's awesome. I, I'm the same way. I started with uh, well, the, cra- the crappy beer, as I call it, and then went to craft beer and eventually to, to bourbon, a little bit of scotch. I actually, take that back. I started with coffee. Okay. Uh, I was doing an internship, and one of my coworkers was all into, you know, pour over with the fancy single origin coffee, and I had to try it. Being the engineering nerd I am, I like the the science behind it, so I got all into that, and that kind of led to craft beer, and from there on bourbon things like that. That's cool. That's awesome. Yeah, totally. That's right. a, it's interesting. So tell me a little bit about uh, your your books, your book company, thirty three books, right? Yeah, that's it. 33 books go. Um, so uh, closing in on 10 years now, which is kind of oh, wow. bananas. Um, I started it again, uh, sort of with beer. I was writing a beer blog in Portland um, back back before everybody had a beer blog. Um, <laughs> and uh, as as that kind of grew, all these like PR people started um, reaching out to me and saying like, oh, would you come to our event and write about it and try all these beers? And um Similar to the way the bourbon and scotch works, you know, there's a secret memory erasing component uh, contained <laughs> in, in each glass. And um, I needed a way basically to remember later what I what I was drinking the day before and what I thought right, about right. it. Because when you're on your you know fifth or sixth one, it's like it can be pretty challenging, even if you drink taste all the time, um, just to, to isolate what's what's particular, or what's interesting about it and remember some of the particulars of it. Um, so I, I, being a graphic designer, um, I was doing that professionally at the time. I made myself a little notebook uh, to help me take those notes. And as soon as I had one, somebody said, oh, I want one of those. And here we are 10 years later with a whole bunch of them. That's very cool. I didn't I realized yesterday I got a like an ambassador or something package from High West Distillery. Yeah. And I and it had your book and I, that's after I got some. Uh, so I, I want a drawing from uh, Scotch in the Bayou, one of the uh, bloggers down here. She uh, she blogged about Scotch, obviously, and she she gave me this book and the Scotch book and your uh, your bourbon book, cool. or your whiskey book, and I've been doing that ever since. Before that, I kind of kept notes on my phone, but nothing sure. nothing official or anything. But I I've fallen in love with these little things. Oh, cool! I'm uh, glad you liked it. Yeah, that High West but, one is really cool. I'm actually working on a new one with them. Oh, really? Now, um, yeah, so that's that's it, really cool. It's the same insides, but the outside is a little bit more like High West branded. It looks pretty cool. Awesome, awesome. And I like the. Uh, so I, I guess tell me, is there any reason why you decided to put little little bits of scotch or whiskey in the ink? <laughs> <laughs> you know, randomly, it was my lawyer's idea. I don't even remember what the why oh, wow. it was that way. Um, uh, but he's kind of a character, um, 
and I don't know, I thought it was kind of a cool idea and people really like it um, as a little yeah. detail. And every time I reprint them, I change which whiskey is in the ink. So I don't know okay. what the one you're holding says on it, but um, I got a couple here I could look at and see what I got. So I have one that says farm distilled single malt from the Isle of Isla, which is probably this guy right here, which is a Kilcoin. Mm. Yeah. Good stuff. Um, it's not this particular bottle, but um, a different kill common. Um, yeah. So this Sorry. one is. I want. I don't know if you remember. This one's cast strength six. Uh, cast strength six year. Oh, six year old Isla whiskey okay. from a single cask distilled in November 2010. Let's see if I can figure that one out here. <laughs> Might be. Well, it's tricky. I can tell that's like kind of an oddball one. Yeah. <laughs> I went. I actually went to Isla. Uh, I think two years ago and filled um, a little bottle here at Lafroig. Um, I'm guessing it's that one here. Oh wow. Yeah. So when you go on the tour, they give you a little, um, they don't give it to you. You pay $75 for the tour. <laughs> right. <laughs> you get a little bottle of whiskey at the end of it, but it's still pretty cool. You get to choose yeah. and uh, see which one you like. Yeah. So a lot of people around here think I'm weird because I like bourbon, obviously, you know, like the sweeter and the little spicy bourbons, but I love Isla Scotch. Yeah. And I like, I guess... It's a lot of people's mind the opposite of <laughs> of bourbon. You're probably like me, you like big flavors. That's that's yes. kind of way I describe it. I like things that are pretty pronounced. I like Mexican coffee. That's real uh, oh, kind of cowboy yeah. flavored. Um, I like strong cigars. I like <laughs> <laughs> beers. I that, like beers. You know. That sounds about sounds about right. Uh, <laughs> that's really cool. Uh, so I guess on a little different note, you you kind of told me why you made the books why do you think it's important for people to who are you know enthusiasts in whiskey bourbon scotch or even beer why is it important to keep notes if you're not a blogger yeah i mean i think um i'm not a scientist by any means you could probably speak more to this than i could but um there is research that merely the act of writing it down helps you remember it better later so it does like cement the memory in your in your mind which is which is great sort of extends the experience um and then i think it's it's a way to kind of focus your um senses as you're as you're appreciating something i mean i'm i'm all for you know the casual glass of whiskey where you're not you know thinking about the notes of banana or clove or what what have you um because i think you know ultimately whiskey and beer and so on are social uh lubricants as, as well <laughs> as um, delicious items to be savored um but i do think like you know another when you're enjoying a nice glass by yourself in a quiet moment it's it's a way to kind of like focus your mind and attention and really try and try and pull something apart and ultimately get something more out of it. Um, whether that's a learning experience or um, just, you know, aiding, aiding the enjoyment of it. <laughs> Very good. I like that. Um, like I said, I recently ordered, what is it? The coffee, the beer, maybe the wine. I ordered three. I don't remember my third one, but okay. I'm really excited because like I said, I'm a nerd engineering yeah. major. I like taking all the notes I can and, sharing that's kind of why i started this podcast and my youtube channel is kind of, it, i like sharing my ideas and i had no one around here to talk to at the time about it yeah and it's also a kind of notes for myself and i actually i use this now i use the book kind of the basic format for all my reviews kind of just go keep it in front of me to remind me what i need to talk about next yeah that's cool and I, I was just listening to your episode that you did on tasting notes that was really cool thank you for that um oh yeah but you know there is significance to all those things too like and as you like you mentioned that you didn't usually think about color and particularly in as it pertains to whiskey you know like color can it doesn't reveal what the flavor of something is going to be but it can be a clue to you know how long it's spent in the barrel if, as it gets darker if it's a scotch um what kind of a barrel it was maybe um and so then as you start to think about those things you can say oh yeah like do i get am i it looks kind of more reddish and 
purplish, like could this possibly have been in a port barrel cask or, um, uh, you know, Majera or something like that. Um, and you can start to think about those flavors and I don't know, it's just a way to get a little bit something more out of it. Yeah. Cause I know my brain moves faster than my mouth and my hands sometimes. <laughs> so I'll, I'll often skip like the colors. The first thing I always forgot about if I wasn't looking at notes or something is to, you know, just skip over that. I still do it sometimes even with the notes in front of me, but, uh, yeah, you're right. It's, it's definitely important to go step by step. And I think that's something, you know, people can learn from this. You, cause at least for me, I've learned to enjoy it more, enjoy whiskey and bourbon more by sitting down and looking at it step by step. You know, you kind of, you take a lot of times if you just, you know, you're shooting it or just drinking, you take for granted what went into making it and that little nuances about it kind of, if you're going to spend that much money, cause even cheap whiskey is expensive whiskey and it, uh, if you're going to spend that much money, it's an investment. You want to get the most out of it. At least that's how I see it. Yeah, totally. And I mean, if you're out at a bar, like, and you see that, you know, we were talking about the boss hog earlier and, you know, even if it's a <laughs> once, <laughs> once, one, once upon a time kind of taste of it, you know, you may never have it again unless you're right. Right. the kind of person that buys a $500 bottle regularly. And that, that was a really cool event. I had a podcast on it too, but it was, uh, we had the Louisiana, whistle pick rep there and so we get to try the whole line of things and it was that was a really cool experience i wish i started bringing this to that that bar now they have a whole big old whiskey selection i started bringing these books now i wish i had it then <laughs> <laughs> but um so i guess uh other than that anything else you want to add or where can people find you yeah so you can find it at 33books.com and uh, i'm always kind of working on new stuff i was just getting ready to add um 33 tequilas to the website. Um, so that's going to be the newest book. I think that's actually the first new book this year. I, I am hoping that there will be at least one or two more this year. Um, and then I'm working on a super secret bourbon project uh, that, that I hope comes out um, in time for the holidays this year, too. Um, it wouldn't take a genius to figure out. I'll, I'll give you a little hint. It's, it's a, It goes on the wall, um, and it's bourbon-related. So, um, <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> you can figure it out. Um, but yeah, I'm always kind of tinkering with new stuff. And yeah, that's awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking the time. Yeah, really enjoyed it. Thanks for having me. Thanks again to Mr. Dave for taking the time out of his day to come speak with us about his products and why taking notes on whiskey is so important. Uh, he was a great guy. I was talking to him a little bit before and after. I told him I feel like I'm talking to a celebrity. Um, he, you, you heard us mention in the interview, but he does work with, he works with high West and if you join their ambassador program or something like that, they will actually send you, you know, high West stickers and all that, but they'll, they'll send you a 33, uh, glasses of whiskey book. And I had gotten that, you know, a couple of days ago, not really thinking much about it. And I pulled it out again yesterday and I said, Oh wow, this is, <laughs> this is his book. I'm actually get to talk to him tomorrow. And so that was really cool. And now I have two whiskey books and I got a, two whiskey books, a scotch book, and I have a coffee and a beer one coming in the mail soon. So that's really exciting. All right. So now we're on to my last sample review from the samples I got from uh, Dave uh, David from the Baton Rouge Bourbon Society. This one is a Four Roses OBSF eight year, three month old store pick from Lincoln Road Spirits in Hattiesburg. It's 67% alcohol, so 120 proof. So it's, I don't think that's a barrel proof. Um, it could be, but this store is famous for its barrel picks. I haven't been yet, but I plan on going on my Nashville trip soon and I'll be driving through Hattiesburg. If you ever get the chance or you have, let me know. Tell me what you like over there. Give me some suggestions. All right. So we're going to be going through the 33 the 33 books method, as I like to call it. So we're going to start by looking at the color. I would call that a, I don't know I say amber a lot. It's usual bourbon color, a little, a lighter amber, dark gold color. Um, again, nothing extraordinarily dark about it. Um, right away on the nose. You get the, there's a classic four roses nose to me. Note on the nose, I should say. 
but then each one each recipe is obviously different i believe i have an obsf or obsq um pick myself here but i've never i don't think i've had this recipe even with the same recipe though you get completely different notes right off the bat though that spiciness i get out of off of four roses is definitely there uh I wish I had the notes in front of me of what the different recipes flavor notes are. It smells hot. It smells very hot. Very spicy too. Let's see what we're getting the taste. Mm. Definitely has a spice kick there. High rye for sure. But Oh, wow. That's something I haven't gotten in a Four Roses before. It's an initial kick in the mouth. A little bit of that is that, excuse me, a little bit of that is alcohol. And a little bit of that is um, rice spice. A lot of that's rice spice. But then it goes straight into a peanut butter note. Now, you, if you've been following my Instagram, you know I have a Nutter Butter blend. This is almost worth putting in there. It's a little too spicy for that. I'm going to be trying it for the first time tonight to see. Maybe it needs some spice. But I hate to waste such a good uh, sample on that. Mm. <coughs> the peanut butter comes out a little bit on the nose after I've taken a taste. Mm. A little bit of a citrus note. Very floral, very spicy. But a little bit... I call it toffee. I, I when I go through these books, here's a note for toffee or a level for toffee. I kind of stretch that to mean like a peanut butter or a, any kind of dark chocolate candy. Uh, sorry, y'all. I'm reading the Scotch book. There's smoke and pee. I grabbed the wrong book. Oops. Uh, it's not really astringent. A little bit sweet, mainly spice though. Uh, not a little bit of cherry, but not a huge dark fruit note. The ling, the finish, or the linger. Mm. Ah, it's about a medium. It's it's a fantastic pick. This I really need to go to this Lincoln Road. I can't remember the guy's name right now, but he does fantastic barrel picks. I hear everything he picks just turns to gold. Definitely want to go check that out. This is a keep. If I had a whole bottle of it, I'm um, hopefully maybe there'll still be some there when I get there. I will definitely pick it up. That is delicious. The f and the finish is not as long as you would think. And the more I drink it, the less alcohol punch it is and the more just spice, like cinnamon rye. It's, it's I, I'd say it's a cinnamon peanut butter bomb. It's a high rye spice. Which is interesting. It's the only bourbon that I get a lot of peanut butter mixed with a lot of rice spice. Usually it's one or the other or neither. But man, that's really good. That's a keep for sure. But yeah. Thanks for listening guys. Go check out obviously all my social media. You know that that's coming up soon. But definitely go check out thirty three I mean make sure I get this right. Thirty three books dot com. Great website. There's something for everybody. There's books, there's books for whiskey, scotch uh, coffee, beer, chocolate. He has a tequila book coming out. As you heard, he has something special for bourbon coming out. He has a lot of maps, like beers around the world, beers around the U.S. Kind of those scratch-off maps, I believe. Or, you know, as soon as you try a beer from a state, you mark it off. Check out. There's something for everybody. There's tasting sets that come with glasses. It's just, go, go support, you know, small businesses. Go support people who are supporting us supporting the bourbon and the whiskey community thanks for watching guys see y'all next time cheers if you want more bourbon in college follow us on instagram at bourbon underscore in underscore college and like our facebook page subscribe to us on youtube and your favorite podcast player find all these links and more at bourbonincollege.com thanks everyone